Hey guys, it's happening. So, it's been a while since I've made an IT video. But uh, that's what I do for a living. That's what I do my whole life. Building servers, building offices, data centers, programming firewall switches. Um, so that's actually how my channel started off. I, I started off making IT videos. Cisco phone systems and Cisco phone system repairs. and um, But this is for a customer. It's going to be a database server. SQL server. Um, runs like their own in-house proprietary program. Um, this was bought on eBay, thousand bucks. It's a Dell R740. Um, yeah, nice server. So it's a single processor. I'll open it up and I'll show you. But this is actually the first server that I've actually worked on where they actually have changed their logo to Dell EMC. Nice bezel though. I think it's metal. I don't know. Well, maybe not. It feels pretty solid though. Um. Like it almost feels like it's machined aluminum, but maybe not. I don't know, but it has some weight to it, so I don't know. All right, so yeah, this is like a thousand dollars. It's a grade B. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's actually was a link that I sent them, but since it's a database server, it's, I mean, this is not going to be under a lot of stress. Let me put the cover down. All right, let's open this up real fast. So it's hit 192 gig of RAM. Single processor, so when you hit, each of these processors has its own dedicated memory, um, so you can't actually populate these channels. Um, let's see, I should have a RAID controller as far as I know. Actually, I've never worked on the 740s. I've worked on seven lots of R720s, 730s, um, so a bunch of PCI Express slots. <clears throat> it's like there's four, three on this side, so four total. I don't know if this has a drag card. I know it has redundant power supplies. It has four NICs. You know, sort of like the same, the 720 has the four NICs. So these things are actually really good for like VMware virtualization, Hyper-V, VMware. Um, and that's actually usually what I ran the 720s on. But this one's going to be a dedicated Windows, uh, you know, the latest version of Windows Server. It looks like 2021. 2022, I can't remember. But, um... Uh, yeah, SQL Server. Like I said, it's going to be running like a, a internal custom database for like the proprietary program. You know, their, their stuff. But, yeah, I don't do a lot of IT videos just because I, I can't film my customer stuff. I can't film their data center, you know, and put it on the internet. You know, it's kind of bad, bad form to sit there and, and be putting videos of some customer's wiring closet. You know, all their servers and how they do stuff. A um, couple other products I'm working on. Those are a couple of Cisco phone systems right there. UC 560s that I, I refurbished um, for an existing customer, just so they had some spares. Um, but if you weren't familiar with that, the Cisco, the Cisco, Cisco got out of small business, but they uh, had like an all-in-one office in a box. You know, network switch, firewall, phone system, all in a box. Okay, enough of that. All right, so the drives are going to be, they're all solid state drives. So there's going to be, there's three. So these are actually the, the Kingston, uh, the nicer ones, like the more enterprise ones. Um, so the, the boot drive, the Windows C drive will be, uh, there'll be three drives. It's going to be RAID 1 with a hot spare. And then for the data, where the database will be stored, will be uh, 960 gig of drives. So basically like one terabyte drives um, and so you're gonna have obviously two drives raid one hot spare raid one hot spare um, that way hopefully this will last the life of uh, the server you know so they'll never have to do SSD drives I mean I don't have a lot of SSD drives fail um, I think if I actually had two fail one was actually just got slow I think I made a video about it being fixing it but uh, one was it just it wasn't detecting the BIOS um, and the other one was, um, it just started running real slow, but, um, I never actually had one fail on the server yet. So, um, I don't have a lot of experience with failing SSDs. So, um, so sometimes, I mean, I don't know if this is, we'll see. I mean, eventually, you know, you, I mean, this customer goes back, you know, years, over 10 years. I mean, I have servers that I built five years. This, the server that I'm replacing, I built like five or six years ago. Um. Yeah, it's funny. Back when I when I was back when I first started in IT in the '90s, um, I mean, one gigabit, one gigabyte of memory was a lot. 
We're talking, we were in megabytes back then. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we're talking... I started fixing computers when I was 15. And, um, yeah, we're talking like 286, 386. First computer was 808. Um, but... Alright, so the RAID controller... I wonder if this is actually... So sometimes you actually have like the, the per controllers. Um, which will have, yeah, okay, this is a per controller. You can tell it's a per controller, it's a real RAID controller, because it has a cache memory ba battery backup. So in case this thing loses power, the the, the data that's inside the, the cache memory will stay actually, uh, th th you won't lose the data in the cache memory. Um, so when it fires back up, it will actually unload the cache. So in case you actually are doing like database transactions, I mean, that's actually, the, I mean, the, the benefit of cache is you're speeding up the, the processing, but you do run the risk of losing your cache in case the power goes out, so it's, you know, and if you're not paying attention to your battery backup, you could lose transactions. All right, so, all right, maybe I'm rambling too much here. Yeah, so there is a remote access card here, too. So, um, some of these actually looks like they, they, sometimes they're an external card. Like I said, I've never messed with a 740 yet, so this is new. All right, so I'm gonna get to, because this is a used server, what I'd use, I like to let it run for a day or two before I install it, just to make sure everything's gonna work okay, and looks good. So I'm gonna install the Windows updates, you know, install Windows Server, install the Windows updates, and then I'm gonna go back and do every single firmware update. BIOS, the BCM controller, the RAID controller, the NICs, network interface cards, um, all these things actually have firmware updates. So I go through, because this thing won't be touched for years and years, this thing will run for years. Um, all right, so yeah, I want to get all that settled right now, and uh, yeah, since there's only one processor, they have less fans. Okay. All right, so I'm going to get that going. All right, here it is. Um, hopefully they fix the... <laughs> yeah, these things are... These, these servers, man, these Dell servers, especially with the life cycle controller, I hate the life cycle controller. Um, it... It take a long time to boot up. Um, so, like, whenever I have to do like a remote reboot at a server or data center, it's like, man, I'm stressing for 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 minutes. Like, you know, because it takes sometimes like just for the to go through the BIOS, it takes a couple minutes. So, because when you do a ro remote reboot or you're doing updates or whatever, you know, you don't know if you're going to go on site <laughs> until the server is totally updated and booted. So, um, I'm going to have to do like the RAID controller options but yeah so you're stressing for a minute i mean I, you're sweating bullets basically and you know you, it's going to determine if you're going to be you know going on site or not but also like a lot of these servers when you reboot them remotely um like you don't know i mean these servers have been running for years sometimes and, and you know linux based servers or whatever and uh you know you don't a lot of times you don't know you have problems with the server until you reboot it so once it starts going through the BIOS checks, you'll see like failed drives or, you know, sometimes there's like no indication there's a problem until you reboot it. Like when it, when it goes back and does all its hardware checks. Yeah, fan throttle up. Um, I, had, I had to switch it from my big monitor to my small monitor because sometimes these newer monitors, they look out of range, like when they, the, the resolution is too small. So it freaks out the resolution. Um, at least I know with this big monitor, this 32 inch monitor, I could do that. Um, all right, so I'm going to go back and iDrag. iDrag has a remote access card. Let's see. Um, let's see device settings. Okay. Integrated perk. A370. I got to click of that. Um, which is cool. You can actually do it from a graphical environment now. But you don't have to do it from like a, like a more like a, I mean, we have a mouse control. Um, I guess you've had this for a while now, but. Alright, so I gotta do uh, physical disk management. I gotta make sure I see all the disks. All six disks. Oh, uh, I think we need uh, X raid. Color management, physical disk management. Okay. Okay. Back. No, I wanna create a virtual disk. I want to be raid one. And cache default. Yeah, the cache memory. What will happen is, if the battery goes dead, it will typically uh, 
disable right back hash. Uh, we go right through. Um, Suck like physical this. SSD. So I want to make it two. I don't want to add the third one. We don't want to make that a hot spare. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, okay. I don't want that stuff. They're not SAS. Uh, they're not serial tasks, Kevin. Um, uh, I guess I unchecked my disk. Okay. Okay, back. A1. And... Huh. Yeah, this noise is sort of annoying. Why did not, uh... Oh, I didn't forget to hit apply changes. <laughs> it's been a little while. Um... Okay, apply change. Okay. Now I go back. And... Make sure everything looks good. And I will call this, um... Boot. Okay, this will be the C drive. And... Okay, confirm. Yes. Hope you guys can see this. I don't even know if you, know, you guys want to see this. Uh, okay, let's go back. I want to make sure that. Uh, okay, back. Okay, raid one, boot zero. Good. All right. Oh, I didn't do that. Controller management. Create virtual disk. I want to do another raid one. And it's going to be... I'm going to make this one data. That, this will be the actual database itself. And I'm going to stuck the disk. And SATA. SSD. And it's going to be these two right here. And then the last two will be the hot spares. So, five changes. Okay. Grade one, data. Okay, very virtual disk. Confirm, yes. Okay. Uh, back. Back. Virtual disk management. All right, two drives created. All right. Um, I guess I can go back to the hot spares. All right, so now I'm gonna dedicate the hot spares. I said, I don't even know if you can see this on camera. All right, so I know this is the actual, using the hot spare, hit operation, scroll down, uh, convert to assign, dedicated hot spare. I don't want it to be a global hot spare because I don't want to assign it to the wrong uh, virtual drive, you know? Um, Kingston. Okay. Go and we want this to be this one. Okay, okay. Alright. And go back. Okay. Now I go back here and this last one. Like I said, there's a difference. I did global hot so if all the drives were the same. Maybe you could do global hotspare, but I want this to be specific because it's a certain size, right? I don't want this big hard drive this to be assigned to the, the RAID, uh, the boot drive uh, container. Like, I don't even know if they even call it a container anymore. Back in the day, they would call it these things containers. Um, maybe create a hotspare. Okay. Uh, what what advanced us? Okay, that's a freaking one there. There we go. And we want it to be assigned to this one. Okay. Alright. And that's it. View view associated. Alright. Ready, ready? 
And that's it. That's right, installing windows. Alright, so they still do have these before I install windows. They actually still have this life cycle controller. Now this will actually increase the boot time by dramatically. Uh, you just go to eye drag and disable it. I, I don't even know what it means. I, I used it a couple times, I think, maybe 10 years ago. I'm not sure. And I think it's, I don't even know what the hell the point of it is. I mean, it helps you like install the OS better, but you know, but dude, it's, it's frustrating, man. It, it adds to the boot time by, uh, sometimes I've actually had to go like two minutes, hang for like two minutes. But I don't like that. Um, that's just stress. Alright, uh... Alright. Actually, before I install Windows, um, what I'm going to do is... I need to enable U UEFI. Um, if this was maybe a Linux server, like a web server or something like that, or... database server in Linux, uh, I might go with Legacy Boot. Um, let's see here. Get in my way. Generic USB boot, da 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 da. Let's see. Okay, I gotta restart it. Let me save. Yeah, it's always a headache, man. It's like you have to reboot, BIOS settings, F2, yes, reboot. And then I'm gonna do an F11 to do a boot sequence. Yeah, man, I'm glad those fans were. I hope you just go down. <laughs> it's weird that when you go, you go into the BIOS. So I'm going to hit F11 and go a boot. Okay, so I'm in the F11 boot manager and I get down my cruiser. That's my USB. And see what happens. Right. There it is. Boot and Windows. Yeah, I'm not going to show you every part of this, but I mean, it's just a basic Windows install. Um, I'm really just going to select the disk. The, the smaller uh, partition or the smaller uh, boot drive will be the C drive and the other one will be a data, data drive. So this will be uh, with desktop experience. Okay. Yeah, they actually already, have, they already purchased the license, so it's going to do the trial and then uh, custom, next, do the whole thing, and that's it. I don't know what that sticky stuff is. Let me get that off there. And I got Windows installed. Oh yeah, I forgot this fan situation, man. I can't have these fans going on there all the time. And really, they should throttle down their own. Not just something wrong with the motherboard. Like, uh, in the front, there's usually like a, like a controller. Like a thermistor or like a temperature sensor. But I gotta figure it out. I'm gonna do all the, uh, Windows updates, firmware updates, and uh, hopefully I can figure out the uh, fan thing. I right, see so a BIOS is still on this machine. I can't just go from my old 1.4.9 to 2.1. I have to like do like a staggered upgrade. Alright, I'm doing updates right now. So don't expect this to take uh, be a quick uh, installation. I mean, just doing these firmware updates, reboots, they take forever to do that. Uh, I mean, I, I'm going to have at least four or five hours in this thing, you know? Going through and verifying and everything. Before I even do the install, at least four or five hours. Now, I did decide to use a lifecycle controller to update. Um, even though I actually upgraded the RAID controller, network card, um, the BIOS, um, and the uh, DRAC card and lifecycle controller, there's still a couple other firmware updates I didn't even know existed on the actual board. So that's actually why I kind of want to make sure everything's updated because this thing's not going to be touched again for probably four or five years if everything goes as planned.